Paul Gregg from Balloon Marketing and welcome to BMTV. This week I'm very happy to bring back to BMTV Mark from Pioneer. Thanks for having me Greg. Mark, thanks for coming. It's always great to have you. Shall we do some deco bubbles? Let's do that. Okay, so we'll take a 24 inch yep. uh, deco bubble. Again, these are sealed in our pack. So the deco bubbles are effectively clear bubble balloons that you generally put other other balloons inside. Other latex balloons inside. Okay. Um, uh, the biggest difference, obviously, no, the aperture's at the end so that there's room to actually put something in, which means there's no self-sealing okay. valve. Yeah. So some people, you know, struggle tying these, so we'll show you, show you the best way of doing we that. We struggled now. when we first got these in um, years ago and we tried to do it. We could never get it right, so we're going to learn today. We do it in a 20 inch as well as a 24 inch. Yeah. Um, 24 inch is good if you want to float extra uh, tulle or uh, extra material off it because it's got more lift. Yeah, okay. Um, so okay. I'm going to. this one? Sorry, this is a 24. This is a 24 inch deco. Um, so I'm going to take a, a 160 cue to help me tie. I'm going to take the air out of it, and then I'm just going to tie a knot in the end. And that's a really strong piece of uh, 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 tying material for us to use. Okay. I'll take um, a trigger outlet and just put a little bit of helium inside. And I find that that makes it easier to place your balloon through into the balloon. Okay. Um, I put three, four folds in the balloon and then I can slide that through the aperture. So we've used a pen for this in the past and you, you recommend against that then? Yeah, it's easy to damage the balloon, it's easy to uh, uh, have some ink or something inside there. Yeah, yeah, so, okay. so if you can just fold it up and just uh, uh, take it through, it's uh, uh, better to do that. Um, if you struggle, I'll pull it about out a bit more. You can always gather the balloon from the inside and, uh, uh, and pull it down yeah. to, to the bead there. So we inflate the outer balloon first. Mm -hmm. Just slide the trigger outlet in. And then we're going to inflate this nearly full. So I want to leave about an inch and a half worth of creases um, uh, uh, either side of the, of the main seam. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to inflate the inner balloon, and as the latex balloon inflates, it will stretch the outer, uh, outer balloon out. Yeah, yeah. A little tip, if you're struggling, you're getting a little bit of screaming from the balloon. If you put a small bit of gas yeah. through, the pressure will open up uh, your fingers and allow you to put the trigger outlet I inside. See, okay. There we are, fully inflated. That looks great. But it's not sealed yet, so you have to keep hold of it tight. And I recommend you put some twists in, twisting both the, 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 the necks yep. so that that's tied together. And that gives you a little bit of leeway to complete your knot. Yeah, yeah. So we use a pre prepared 160, and I'm going to hold it in the centre and stretch it all the way out, and then just bind it around six times in one direction. Why six and not five? Oh, not seven. <laughs> um, I have number. no <laughs> idea. <laughs> Mark, explain to us why he stretches it out first. I'm going to demonstrate that. So Put we... your finger on, it is stretched out, and Mark releases that. That starts to get tighter on my finger. So imagine that's doing the same thing on the balloon. It provides a much better seal. So yeah, sometimes I know what I'm talking about. Balloon professional. Indeed. You have to remember we've not actually tied this off yet, so we're just going to tie two knots carefully in the 160. Yeah. And if you want to, if you're a safety first person, you can also, as you normally would, tie the latex. So you've twisted the neck, you've put the 160Q on, you've done it six times one way, six times the other way, and then you've pulled the latex neck out and tied that as well. Yes. There's no helium coming out of that, is there? Not, not very easy. Anyway. <laughs> not easy at all. So that okay. gets a really good seal. Fantastic. So essentially, uh, high float themselves describe uh, high float as a little bit like the glue on a postage stamp. Okay. Uh, mixed with water. Yeah. 
So it's in its liquid form with its water. Uh, when you put that inside the balloon, you cover the inside of the balloon, you inflate the balloon as normal, uh, and then over a period of time, it dries. Mm. Now, to understand how it's working, you need to think about latex itself and, and, and helium. Helium is one of the smallest molecules that, that there is. Yep. Uh, and uh, if you think of pure natural latex, as it's stretched under a microscope, you'd see a net like yeah. material. So the molecules spread out. Exactly. Leaving gaps for the uh, uh, helium to escape through. So the better quality balloon you have, obviously once it's inflated, the smaller that net is yeah. and it traps more of the helium. Okay. But helium is always escaping. It's yeah. always escaping from uh, a, a cylinder. It, it, they're tiny, tiny, tiny molecules. So always think of it as a sliding scale. Helium is always escaping. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. So what this does is it reduces that, and it uh, it will make another 11 inch balloon float for up to 25 times longer. All right. Okay. That's that's pretty amazing. Um. So I'll decap this, and I'll show you what to do. Take your 11 inch balloon and place it down onto the uh, pump in the upright position. You don't want to pull this all the way down so that you're restricting. Uh, the flow of high flow. Okay. Uh, uh, but you also don't want to be uh, putting any high flow on the neck because that's where you actually tie the balloon. Yeah, okay. So we rotate this down. What would happen if you tied the balloon with high floats in it, in the neck? In the neck. Normally it comes out of the neck onto your fingers and then uh, makes the whole process messy yeah. and, and, and slow to do. Okay. So then we're going to give it one full depress. Yeah. And now the high float has travelled through and it's into there. Okay. okay. And now I'm going to use the, the sort of wider part of main bulbous part of the balloon to wipe the nozzle clean. This is okay. a bit that people forget to do. Yeah. If I wipe that nozzle clean as I remove it and return it to the upright position and recap it, yeah. either with your cap or a five inch balloon, yeah. um, uh, then I'm ready to go. So just going back, you had to prime that, didn't you, first? So there was the high float already to there. So when you press the pump down... When you uh, originally get your your kit, um, whichever uh, uh, size that you're using, yeah. um, you need to undo the top part, tighten the bottom part up, and then prime uh, uh, some through okay. so that there's no air gaps. And then once you've got it primed through, just tighten that back off and then that's ready to, okay. to go. And that's how it should stay for some time. And that's why you keep the cap on there because you want to keep that liquid. You want to keep it all liquefied and, 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 and not have any of it dry into a, essentially a glue. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, so I, I've got obviously a high float in the, in the base of the balloon. Yeah. Now what I see a lot of people do here is, is, is massage and massage and massage and massage. And essentially you can, you can force bubbles into the high float, which okay. then when they dry, don't don't properly secure yeah. the, the helium in the balloon. So my tip is to, to put the balloon in the flat of your hand, put your thumb across the, the opening of the neck so there's no high float in there, yeah. stopping when you press on the balloon, uh, stopping high float getting into the neck, yeah. Yeah. and then just to rub that around until you feel that you've got high float covered naturally all the way around. So you've got to cover the entire bulbous part of the balloon. Yes. Uh, if you leave too much in one area, then uh, there'll be more weight in one area, and that's why sometimes balloons yeah. float to, to one yeah. side once you've inflated. Also, if you miss a bit... So basically, this is forming a barrier, isn't it? So it's these... forming a barrier, uh, and, and when this stretches, um, uh, you'll be able to see the liquid high float inside. Okay. Should we do that? All right, yeah. So I use a trigger outlet. I've got my helium on. Uh, really, really important, the balance between the amount of high float that you put in a balloon and the amount of helium you put in there for lift because okay. we're adding weight to the balloon yeah. when we add more high float. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to inflate this as we've done before. Now we're using a dual tone balloon here, so hopefully you'll be able to see inside inside the balloon. Oh yeah. You can actually see that. I don't know where you'll be able to catch it on camera, but you actually can see inside there the, 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 the wet yeah. high float. And if you'd have uh, worked it and worked it and worked it with your fingers, you might actually be able to see bubbles there. Yeah. All we can see at the moment is little dots where it's like an Artex ceiling. It's got a little peak yeah. 
yeah. where, where it's pulled apart. So this is just one of our 20-inch uh, clear deco bubbles. Discard our waste and open this up. Now, because, again, I, 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 have, I don't know the science to this really, mm -hmm. but I, I know that the acrylic plate will need some form of air to dry. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a little bit of air into the uh, 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 to the deco bubble. So when uh, you say that, you mean instead of just putting some helium in instead there? Instead of solely using helium in okay. there. And then I've got some of these that I've prepared earlier. I'm going to take off my 160. Mm -hmm. And then we can just place this through, open the neck up, place this through the neck. And you could you can pull the balloon. You can see because it's fairly clean. I'm not actually yeah. putting any paint directly in the balloon until I'm ready. Ooh. And you don't need a great deal. And then you're out, you can recap. Recap the end and keep things nice and mm -hmm. nice and relatively clean. Keep some tissue ready to to do. And then I've just got an old card here. And then you can start to just feather out and just make some shapes inside. I quite like the one you've done because it's quite minimal. There's not a lot. You've only gone from the bottom, but you can do it wherever you want you, on the that, And that's the point of just showing, just showing this as a, a, as a basic idea. And you don't want too many hard lines. You want it to be quite natural yeah yeah really organic um, one might say <laughs> well, it kind of is isn't it it is but it's an overused word artistic okay we say. all right let's let's move away from organic to artistic <laughs> at some point you'll say organic and you won't be able to no but, oh that's an old hat there <laughs> um uh, and i'm going to use another color do you think organic still still got legs uh i think it will i think it's become uh uh something that's that, that that's really interesting long term now yeah um i i think it will be a different style of uh, of what we now know as uh, as, as classic decor you know i mean yeah. it's gonna it's gonna last yeah um i did see something on the instant gram as people of my age say i'm only joking anybody that is of my age 40. <coughs> um that uh, bubblegum balloons. Hello, bubblegum balloons. By the way. Oh, hello, ladies. They, they, they've got one hundred thousand subscribers on their their, their Instagram. Oh, that's incredible, and isn't it? I saw what they did to the outside <laughs> yeah. of their building. It um, is wonderful, yeah, isn't wow. it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very well done there. So, I'm just gonna. You can play with this and do something that that is really. I just want the colours to mix in the centre there just to oh yeah i like that yeah just to give it something a little bit different get in there now something that we're happy with i like that yeah, yeah. and then once you're ready um we're going to inflate as normal but before i inflate i'm just going to put a little bit more air in here because i want that paint to i want that paint to start to dry yeah and then we're going to use our helium in the same way as we would normally do with a normal deco bubble. Trigger outlet. What do you think? That's very interesting. Just something that is different. And I think I've made a, a, a simple way for people to to have a go at doing this so uh, we've got that there I, I want to add a little bit more rhythm and movement to the okay. design um, I'm going to do that uh, by doing some bubbles from the mouth to the number eight almost like but the narwhal is inflating number eight okay is is the madness behind That's, the design yeah <laughs> um, so I'll drop that down out of the way and just show you that with a diamond clear 260 uh, 
you don't need a great deal three pumps is absolutely fine yeah tie that off and then i'm just going to do some random bubble sizes so you're not doing the consistent not doing consistent um if you want to you can graduate these yeah. you can you can you can do what you you know you, you you think is right um one thing that i would recommend people do is do at least four turns in between each okay in between each bubble um and just just doing a, a random uh, pattern is, is nice and easy um and you'll find that if you if you don't hold them tight in the design if you let them sort of flex slightly um they'll look more like random bubbles all right i remember when i first saw subola do this and did every single one exactly the same that's it, why i do random ones because <laughs> <laughs> i'm not so <laughs> they just didn't look like a balloon in any way it was amazing absolutely amazing hello sue hi sue obviously important that we're twisting all in the same direction yep because if you don't they're all going to come undone yeah and that we're holding each, <laughs> you do know stuff now yeah. and holding each one separately yeah and then when we get to the end, we just need to control, burst that end piece and tie that off. And then remove any excess. Okay. And then we've got two ends and I'm also gonna use some balloon bond to attach those to the design. All right. Because it's my new favorite stuff ever. Really? <laughs> And this is, this is the nice thing about this, is that we can take this, stick it directly over the end, mm -hmm. and that's secured now there. If I wanted to move away, I could just lock those, lock yeah. those off. I'm just gonna take the uh, end of air bead off and then take that so you just put that straight over the knot straight over the top of the knot um, I'm hoping that that will the mechanics will be even though it's diamond clear will be less visible when okay. it's actually stuck to the uh, the design uh, and then we're ready to peel those off as uh, as we go so if you just come up with this design today yesterday um, no, I spend hours preparing before every visit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a yes. You yeah. just came up with it today. <laughs> so this might be a bit difficult. I'm sorry if I cover you, Greg, here, because it's in the, in, the, in the way of the camera. Um, but if we just take both sides of that and take the bond off and drop that to our bottom of our number, eight that'll stick nice there and take the other side off and drop it to the mouth and you can spend more time than this and get the the design exactly the way you want it and you just get some nice bubbles i think that okay that's great that's, that's really fun really fun, unusual easy. yeah and hopefully that's creating movement that's yeah. creating a bit of rhythm in the design yeah. that makes it look like it's not stationary yeah yeah no i love it um there is lots of action going on dpd have just arrived so you'll see lots of stuff going on but ignore that and let's focus on what mark's doing so mark we're here okay we're going to do it so we've got our, our ball and our magnet we're just going to attach the loop line directly to the magnet on this occasion i'm just running it through the ring Yep. And then that attaches to the ball. Now we've measured twice the distance from the floor to where we're going to drop this over. We did. Uh, and then we're going to uh, raise, I've tied a three foot rose gold to the other end, and we're going to raise it up using the, uh, uh, the banana kit. So the loop line sits over the top and then just rolls down. So the only real technique to get used to is you need to secure the loop line and it's good because it's got knots so there's some extra friction on it yeah um, so that when you press the button and extend the uh, magpole 
you actually let the line run through your fingers. Yeah. Okay. And then at each point you drop down to the next one, press a button, and then you can let that run out. If you were to let that go, then obviously the ball would would, would drop yeah. down. So you've got to yeah. keep holding on to that. Okay. So take this all the way up. I was surprised when I just held the magpole there a minute ago how light it actually is. Yeah, I mean it does have some I think it's got quite a good weight to the to the base of it, but for the size of the pole. Yeah, it's great. I think it's really good. Like you said, you can get to a lot of places and you don't need to pick it up off the floor at all. Yep. So we're at the the, the maximum height now, so okay. I'm just gonna do a vertical lift up and over. Nicely done. And then you can let the banana kit back down and I can pass you that. Okay, I can bring that down. On the magpole. Yep, yeah, I got it. And then just gently reduce pressure on the line and drop that down. You got it down faster than I can get this down. Just pop that out of the way. Fantastic. Because we're done with that now, aren't we? Done with that for the moment. Okay. Um, uh, so I'm going to keep hold of the ring magnet and then I'm just going to hoist a decoration or whatever you decide into position and the nice thing of rather than uh, doing this now is visually you can decide on the height yeah from 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 on the ground whereas yeah. if you'd set it up before and just hooked it up directly to a beam um you, you'd have to be maybe up and down a couple yeah. of times until you got it into the right right position yeah. Um, so at that point you can secure the line off. So you could just tie that to something? You just tie that off to something. On, on this occasion though, I'm going to use the loop line here and the magnet that we've got. Slide that through. Your thumbs. We're just going to drop that too side there and actually use the magnet to secure it yeah um, so the only thing I'd say there is if what if a child came along and pulled it or something like that exactly. what can you do so the nice thing is that you can secure this up and out the way so we can take this as as, as high as we like we can use the mag pole to, to to hook this end up yeah and as long as we're at the same tension we'll get the same height yeah um, okay. one of the things to be aware is that there's a lot of um, the, the pull or the the magnetic connection um, or the force is measured on a straight line pull yeah which is really hard but if you were to try and um, uh, slide it, you'll see that there's uh, a, a lot less uh, um, uh, friction there to, yeah, to, to yeah. move, a lot less magnetic pull. So my only advice is if you're going to actually uh, uh, attach it somewhere, be aware that that could slide up. That yeah. it can slide. Yeah. But you could always secure that off once it once it's in, in, it's in position. Yeah. Mark, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye bye.